Ladies and gentlemen, you heard Pradeep and the other distinguished speakers tell us about uh, the Indian diaspora as far as it applies to entrepreneurship. Uh, Dr. Muni said that he will accept five questions. We are running behind. Some of us have to go and come back. I'll only accept three questions. Uh, I'm a, I know I'm a difficult uh, chairman, but uh, yes, one, two, three, fine. Uh, we'll, we'll take all the questions first, and then I'll ask my panel to answer. Ladies first. Uh, thank you. Um, I have a question for Mr. Chowdhury. Uh, my name is Rachel Amstis, and uh, I do research on Nepal at NUS. Um, I grew up in and have spent about 80% of my life in Nepal, and I consider Kathmandu my hometown. And I have, uh, I'd like to add uh, to you specifically, um, I have a lot of happy childhood memories of eating YYs with friends. Uh, that said, um, uh, non-resident Nepalis have uh, supported Nepal a lot, increasingly in the last uh, several years, not only through remittances, but also through charitable organizations, such as uh, the Global uh, Help Nepal Network. Uh, additionally, social entrepreneurship is a relatively new and uh, growing field in Nepal, and uh, one example is the organization Change Fusion Nepal. Um, I'm wondering, uh, what's your opinion on the viability of social entrepreneurship in Nepal, where uh, those organizations focus is on, uh, focuses on private initiatives uh, serving people, protecting the planet, and generating profit all at the same time? Uh, for developing and bridging Nepal's business and civil society sector? And uh, what can non-resident Nepalis do to support uh, social entrepreneurship initiatives in Nepal? Thank you. Thanks. Next question. Uh, my this question is for you. Pradeep. First I think one. it was a very stimulating talk. Thanks for that. I think a couple of follow-on questions from that. I think what uh, the first question that comes to mind is, what is the difference in the middle class values what, what is it about, what is the USP about the middle class values which makes it tick? Uh, related to that is, uh, how is the Indian DNA, the diaspora, the, the successful people, how does that compare with the DNA of other emerging market leaders? Is there something that distinguishes us from that, I mean, the English language, early start? And I didn't hear anything about IIMs and IITs. Is that something relevant as well? There are three questions, you know. Never mind. I had a few more, but... No, no, please stop there. You, did, you, did you name yourself? My name is Vivek Chhapra. Thank you very much. Third question, please. Yeah, fine. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. My name is Akshay, uh, and I'm from Bombay, or Mumbai as it's now called, uh, and I'm pursuing a global MBA from the SP Jain Center of Management here in Singapore. Uh, my question is directed towards Mr. Pradeep Pant. Uh, so as a professional looking to make an impact uh, in the fastest growing consumer goods region in the world, i.e. Asia, I'm a bit concerned. While numerous Indian professionals have made it to the top echelons of multinational corporations at a national level, uh, barring a few exceptions, uh, like the gentleman you mentioned on your slides, uh, Indians generally tend to play second fiddle to expats uh, when operating on a regional and global level. Do you envisage this trend changing, sir? And if yes, how soon? Thank you. The underlying premise of that is, in my view, not valid, but uh, we'll let Pradeep deal with that. First, from one Nepali to another, would you like to answer the question? <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to find amongst the uh, participant, someone who considers Nepal home. So I'm sure you know what Nepal has gone through over the years, even in terms of the roles of INGOs, NGOs, as well as the social entrepreneurs who are supported both by the international community, donor community, as well as the various governments. I think there is a huge opportunity for the social entrepreneurs and non-resident Nepalese, people like ourselves, to work together to create the right examples and to participate in the right kind of initiatives, which will 
generate job which will generate economic activity sustainability and also which will be seen as a lasting sustainable home bred act, uh, organization institutions whatever you may like to call it so i think the in short the answer is that yes non resident nepalese should work with the social entrepreneurs and enlarge their role thank you mr chaudhry Pradeep, you have two questions. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be brief on them. What the, on the morality of the middle class and the values that come out of it, basically is a, uh, you get a very good sense of your own true north. And when you take business decisions uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, you take them from a value platform, uh, which is solid, which is something that's been instilled to you, uh, into you uh, from a very young age. And that is truly appreciated in global corporations. I can't tell you how much, uh, because in, this, uh, in, the, in the world today where uh, uh, compliance, where uh, the Sarbanes Oxley is alive and kicking, it's, it's, a very, it's an asset to have this. And I think it really resonates well with the, uh, global corporations. Uh, on the question of uh, uh, are the uh, people from, from uh, South Asia, uh, when are they going to do as well as uh, you said expatriates, and I was, I was grinning to myself mentally because the people from South Asia are also expatriates uh, in many cases. Uh, they are, they are uh, living as expatriates in other markets. Uh, uh, but today, I don't think a corporation really worries as to where you're from and what the color of your skin is and what your religion is. They look at your competencies, they look at how well you can work in global teams. I think that's a, that's a very important, uh, you know, the oft talked about T-shaped capabilities, I think is a very, very important uh, thing. Not only deep functional understanding, which is the vertical on the T, but the horizontal on the T is working cross-functionally, cross-culturally. How robust is that? And I don't think uh, uh, the guys I talked about or the 40 other people I know who've done well uh, in global corporations. They have very, very strong uh, T-shaped capabilities. Can I ask Jignesh to also address his mind to that issue, having run exchanges outside India, besides, of course, having built up a very substantial organization in India. You've also done so in Dubai. You're also doing it now in Singapore. Uh, you, you've seen what Pradeep said. Uh, what is your view about the talent pool and how do you deal with it in your organization? On the, generally on the talent pool, particularly take up the case of in India, what Pradeep said is um, all good uh, in totality, um, but at the same time while we have a large number of entrepreneurs, um, the scaling, uh, we don't find what you see it in Europe and America. The scaling which uh, happens um, in those world, developed world, is, is much bigger and much larger. So that is the skills which uh, require to be built uh, within the, uh, the new emerging economies. And um, in terms of the regulations, I think um, the emerging market or the developing countries need to develop uh, a serious capability in terms of a conducive environment to allow uh, uh, opportunity to fail also and yet not it be a stigma. Then only the rightly the risk will be price and people will be encouraged to be entrepreneurs. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, could you join me to thank all our speakers? Thank you, distinguished MC, panel. May we call upon you. Dr. S. Narayan to please join us on the stage once again as we honor the esteemed panel we have on the stage with tokens of appreciation, please. Dr. Narayan, can we give him a big one welcome, please, ladies and gentlemen. To our first speaker, Mrs. Binod K. Chowdhury, President, Confederation of Nepalese Industries, Nepal. Our moderator, Mrs. Satpal Qatar, Chairman Qatar Holdings Private Limited and Chairman of the Singapore India Partnership Foundation followed by Mr. Jigne Shah, Chairman and Group Chief Executive Officer, Financial Technologies Limited, India. 
And last, but certainly not the least, Mr. Pretty Pant, President Asia Pacific Craft Food Singapore. Join me in thanking the panel once again with a big round of applause as we thank Dr. Narayan once again, please. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.